Hello, my name is Alison and I'm from the Surrey area of Nafas. I'm going to teach you how to do a design, a very simple design that will be ideal in autumn time, but actually for any other time of the year. And it's a very simple design and I'm able to recycle materials that are very easily available. I'm just going to move it down whilst I show you how I made it. And for this, you need to have a piece of cardboard. And I particularly like to use the cardboard that comes from the flower boxes that I get from the wholesaler. This is actually the, the, the edge of it. And I'm today using a piece of cardboard that is 72 centimetres by 6.5. But this can be changed and you can scale it up or scale it down. And so this is a particularly good weight of cardboard to use. And then I need to cover it with something. And I like to use double-sided sellotape for this. And I need to put some strips of that onto the uh, cardboard, like so. And then I take it round and I put a piece on the other side as well. Now, depending on the fabric or the, the ribbon that you're using to coat, cover your cardboard with, will depend on whether you need to cover up the, the printing. If you've got a thin fabric then, or sheer fabric, then you may well need to cover it up. But I'm going to be using some Hessian ribbon and therefore it's fairly thick. And in this particular case, I don't feel that there is a need to uh, cover it up. So I've now covered the cardboard with strips of the double-sided sellotape and I'm now going to cover it with the ribbon. So we work on one side at a time and you need to tear off the backing strip and I'm using a, a ribbon that is actually seven centimeters wide whereas my cardboard is 6.5 but that doesn't worry me because I can then use uh, the edges and I can fray them slightly. Now I'm just going to fold over the edge just so that I haven't got a raw edge and I'm going to start at one end and then I'm going to smooth the ribbon down on top of the double-sided sellotape, smooth it down and then turn it over. I'm not cutting it at this stage. I then need to remove the strips on the other side and use that and again smooth it out And then when I get to the other end, I'm then going to cut it off with a couple of centimetres longer so that I can then fold this under at the same length as the piece of cardboard to get a neat finish. And if I wanted to, I could actually add a little bit of glue there, smooth it down. And I'm not worried that there's some loose pieces. That doesn't matter because I can just remove those and I get a nice frayed edge. Now the next thing we're going to do is to fold it up to make the zigzag. And what I really recommend is a good idea is to get a piece of newspaper the same size as this and just practice just so that you're confident as to the way in which you're going to fold it. So I'm going to fold it first into half and give it a good press and then fold it back on itself like so and then at this stage of course you could have a zigzag that goes in, in for your design 
Um, as, as why does that? Because I'm thinking of this design as possibly being able to be used um, on a coffee table or in the middle of a hall table, perhaps in a, a village hall, where the tables are quite narrow. If you have it this wide, I think it would be too high, uh, wide for that uh, particular case. But what we can do then is we can then make it slightly smaller and fold it back and back again. And then this is the tricky bit. Well, not really tricky, but you have to fold the fold back so that you can then get a zigzag. But if you try it with a piece of uh, paper first, you really will get the idea. And then you can open it out. And there you have your zigzag. And you'll see that at the end, um, it can be really quite neat because you've folded it back. If you've got any stray pieces of um, threads from the ribbon, you can then just trim it out. Now at the moment it's a bit wobbly and uh, it needs a base and the base will help it to uh, centre it and to give it a focus. Now I can cover a piece of cardboard uh, in, a, in a similar way or similar size to the piece we started out with and I would cover that with an appropriate coloured um, paper. Uh, I've used wrapping paper in this case, it's um, of red because I feel that reds and oranges and yellows are really appropriate colours to use uh, in autumn time. So just a strip of cardboard which is covered and then when you place your um, zigzag on that then you, you, you really centre it and you get um, a, a focus point. Now what are we going to put the uh, flowers and foliage into? Well, the obvious thing you could use, and if you had it like this, you could put little bottles. I'm thinking of spice bottles or the bottles that you get um, food colourings in, if you, if you could save those up. They would be ideal and you could put them in the spaces and it just it just centres the, the eye into the um, little niches that you created there. But another thing, of course, you could use would be test tubes. Now, you can use the clear polycarbonate test tubes and, and they're great to use or, or glass ones um, but we're thinking of recycling and reusing and we often get these test tubes with our flowers from the wholesalers. I don't need to use the, the little plastic top, that's not appropriate in this particular case and I'm using gutta percha which uh, you can obtain from the wholesalers or, or online and I'm going to use that to cover my test tube. Now this is like a sticky crepe paper and when it's stretched it becomes even stickier. So I'm just wrapping that around the top and I'm um, stretching it as I go and then I can stretch it and I can wrap it around overlapping so that the plastic is disguised coming all the way down to the bottom. So if you've got some test tubes that are past their best, perhaps you've used them for other projects and they're looking a little, a little tired or a little scratched, then you can cover them up with this go to percha. Now, if you are wanting to use um, a, a particular colour, you can get a wide variety of colours online and particularly from cake decorating supplies because they would use those for their sugar craft. So once you've got your test tube covered, then you need to attach it to the zigzag and with that I like to use elastic bands. Now you may be able to recycle ones that you've picked up from the postman or you can buy them from a uh, stationer's and I thought that this red colour coordinated well. So I'm putting the uh, tube in the middle and then I'm taking a, a looping it round the top and looping it around the bottom so that it's held in place and there's like a little leg. I'll turn it round and then you can see that it's held in place and if you're very careful and make sure that these elastic bands lie smooth and straight then it looks particularly neat. And you would continue that in the inverted V all the way along your um, design. And I've coordinated the red elastic band to match the red uh, covered board underneath. So I just want to show you another idea that I have already prepared and uh, using a rather brightly coloured ribbon and it, this is wire edge ribbon 
And in this case, I've used the polycarbonate um, test tubes. And you'll see that I've used pink elastic bands in this particular case. Now this is bright and cheerful and on an appropriate colored board. That would be great for, for a party any time of year. Now it might be that you want to do this at Christmas time and you can get some beautiful Christmas ribbons and then maybe you may be able to um, use appropriate color, uh, colored flowers and little accessories. Back now to the design I showed you first. And actually, I'm a full, full, firm believer that simplicity is the basis of all good design. And I really quite like it as it is, with no flowers at all. But we're flower arranging today, and so therefore I do want to use some flowers. And I've already prepared some small bunches of flowers which um, contain seasonal flowers. So here I have got some rounded hypericum with a sheen on it that's shiny. I've got a small chrysanthemum which um, is a rounded form. I've then got the volumetric form of the Alstroemeria or Peruvian lily and some solidago from the garden. So I've collected together a variety of different flowers. So in this case um, we've got four different types and I'm going to position these along the uh, strip that we've got here. I'm also using Carthanus, which is also known as the safflower, that beautiful bright uh, orange flower there. So they're all uh, colours which are um, harmonious together, the oranges and the uh, yellows together. And some of the bunches I'm putting on one side so that they're facing um, towards the uh, front. And then I shall turn the board around and you will have some on the opposite side. So in this case, I'm using a piece of wood. It's actually the side of, a, of an old drawer that we had at home. So I just think that wood is a really complements the, the colours of um, these uh, autumn flowers. And so there is water in the test tubes and I fill the test tubes using one of these uh, test tube fillers. But if you haven't got one of these, a turkey baster works well or one of the little syringes from, uh, uh, that you would have with medicine. So these have all been filled up in advance. So just to complement this, I have been on a walk and I've gathered together a few items of uh, seasonal interest for um, this time of the year. And I've got some conkers. Um, so I've got some conkers in place there. And I've also got some beech masks with the beech nuts inside. And I think they look really dramatic once they've opened up. Um, and, we have, and these are on either, it could be decorated on either side. I'm just going to do one side today. I'll just turn that around and show you. But if you have that in the center of a table, and you were able to wanting to talk to the people opposite, it's low enough and, and also you can see through it. So you can decorate it with what's ever appropriate for the season. Maybe at Christmas time you could have little baubles or small little Christmas figures. If you did it at Easter time with lovely spring flowers, then maybe some Easter eggs might be appropriate. So there is a design that's quick, economical, and I hope you enjoy it.